Hello again. In this video we're going to look at creating our first scenario and you're going to see that it's very straightforward and the software takes you through it step by step. So we're in our home screen. You can see we have the create scenarios button. So we're just going to click that and we have a little uh, dialog up. Just to note, don't worry about this little black box in the corner. What that actually is, is um, it's a preview of what you'll be seeing on your big projection screen. Obviously we can't show that uh, on an online video, so it's just a little preview of what you'll see on your projector. Okay, so it's asking us to name the scenario. So we're going to name this one Calming Space Scenes. Okay, we can select a group. So it'll show us all our existing groups. We have educational, new group, online test one, screen test. Or we can choose to name this, or should I put this in a, a new group? And we're going to put this in a new group called Calming Scenes. Okay, we click OK. So we've got online space scenes, or sorry, calming space scenes, and uh, calming scenes. And we just click Create. The next thing it asks you to do, and this is an important step, you want to let other users know what this scenario is all about without them having to open it. So we're going to say this is just helps the user calm, relax, take it easy. Just what you're trying to achieve by the scenario. And then we just put a short description in. So calming space scenes with lighting effects from iris listeners which are created by Warren do whatever your name was and we click OK just a note with the top we've got description here we click on that if we ever need to change what's in there we can do Okay, so this is the creation page for Room Director. So anytime you're creating a scenario, this is what's going to look like. The layout is as follows. The top right, we have our media, so that includes audio, movie, meaning videos, pictures, PowerPoint presentations, titles, which is kind of like subtitles, we'll come back to that and visualizations which are, are sound generated visualizations. The last thing is command and, and we'll come back to that as well but it's it's simple it's just pause and things like that. The next line is Iris listeners. Now depending on your room setup it may look slightly different than this but don't worry about that. What this represents is what you have in your mile room. So in this particular room we have bubble tubes, fog machine, fiber optic side glows, LED strips, scanner and a three shape infinity. So don't worry that yours is different just uh, be mindful that it has the Iris devices that are in your room. The same goes for this next line this is the Iris talkers and again this may change from room to room and here we have a color selector we have the hotspot which is for the touch capable uh, projection screen. We have an iPad and we have a cube. So that those are our Iris talkers in this room. Again yours may differ slightly. The bottom of the screen we have our timeline and our play functions. So we have our timeline which is starting at zero and counting all the way across up to one hour. So that's the maximum time for a scenario. It's very rare anyone will um, need to exceed that. We've got bars here that if, if you've ever used video editing software this will look very familiar. If not it's still pretty straightforward. We have a line for video or audio. We have a line for pictures. We have a line for other media. Other media being PowerPoint presentations, titles and so on. We have command which refers to this and again that's our pause and our restart functions. We have a line for our Iris talkers so that's a color selector, hotspot, iPad 
and cube. And then we have our Aris listeners listed out one by one. So in this room we have two bubble tubes, fiber optic side glow, fog machine, LED light strip, scanner and three shape infinity. An important thing to show you first of all is how to navigate in this. So you can see as I move my mouse over the timeline it changes from a normal mouse cursor to a hand with a pointing finger and this means that we're in the timeline. So if I click down here nothing happens. However if I left click up here you can see what we actually do is move this red line. This red line is called our insertion line and um, it's where we will drop events in so if we want a bubble tube to turn on it happens on this red line. We also have a yellow line and the yellow line is our play line. So as the scenario plays this will move from left to right. These two lines will become important as we start putting a scenario together. We've got fast forward, sorry fast forward uh, fast rewind, stop, pause and play in here. The two most important ones are play and pause and we'll see why shortly. So I'm going to hit stop and see what stop does is it actually brings the play line back to the start of the scenario. If we hit pause it makes the red line go to the yellow line and that will be important in a moment. Okay, so at this point we want to put a movie into our scenario. And this is the, the normal way we would start a scenario, either by putting a movie, our music, our pictures and so on, and that's what we cue the sensory equipment effects to. So if we have an event in a movie where we're underwater, we turn the lights blue and so on and so forth. So, we just make sure that the red insertion line is at the start. We drag and drop down our movie. Just let go. You can navigate anywhere on your computer here. I've just got our videos under the um, video library. And we're going to pick Camming Space Video. See it actually copies the media. And what this means is you don't, say you for example you had that video on your desktop, you don't need to keep the original um, Room Director actually copies it into its own folder so it doesn't have you wasting um, hard drive space. So you can see we've got a blue line, light blue line uh, under video slash audio. You can see it's telling me that it's calming space video and it's about just over 11 and a half minutes long. If I hit play, you can see in our little preview window we've got a nice purpley blue space scene that we're slowly going through space and you can see our play line is moving along here. So at this point we're going to decide I want something to happen in the room. So what we can do is hit pause and the most significant thing that happens when we hit pause is that the red drop line moves to where we are in the video and what that means is if we want to insert something precisely here in the video we just hit pause and whatever we drop in will happen there and then. I'm going to say that we want the bubble tubes to turn on blue. So we just grab our bubble tube, drag it down. We have two bubble tubes in this room, so you can see the top of this dialog box asks us which bubble tube, one or two, or all. If you had five bubble tubes, it would say one, two, three, four, five, all, and so on. So we're just going to say all. We're going to say turn on. You can see the other options there, bubbles on, passive mode. Passive mode just means um, they'll go through the colors by themselves. Bubbles off, so you can just have the color on without the bubbles and off completely. So we're going to say turn on and we're going to say blue. And we click OK and you can see we get two little markers in here called glyphs and there if I hover my mouse over it, I'm not clicking on anything, if I hover my mouse it says bubble tube 2, it's going to turn blue at 20 seconds. Simple as that. We hit play again and you can see our video continues and our play line moves again. And we can hit pause again and again it moves our drop line 
and we could say, oh well we want the fiber optic side glows to turn on. You can see what happens is it remembers our last choice was turn on in blue. So this is a handy feature. Um, so we say, yeah, we want that to happen. And I want the LED strips to turn on blue. And I want the three shape infinity to turn on blue. So we've got all these things going on here. So if I press play again, then those devices will turn on. Two slightly different um, devices we've got in this room are a fog machine. So obviously we can't pick a color for fog. We, um, if we drag that down, you'll see we've got on and off, and then we've got the select duration of smoke. So this will just send out a one blast of, of fog. So we'll say just for this one, we want three seconds. Click OK, and then you can see we've got the glyph in there. We hit play again, and we get the three second blast of fog. It only does that once. If you want another blast, you have to do another uh, insertion. Another device we've got in here that's slightly um, different to the rest that are that are just color is the scanner. So if we drop the scanner down, again we've got three commands in this. We've got turn on, pan and tilt, and turn off. So turn on is pretty straightforward. I'm going to say that we want it to turn on blue as well. You can see it's turned on blue. Now a scanner has the ability to point a spotlight anywhere in the room and Mile can control where that spotlight is. So again, if we hit play, so at this point the scanner is turned on and it's pointed at wherever it was pointed before. We hit play, or sorry, pause. We drag the scanner down again and we select pan and tilt. You can see we can now click in this box. So this will have been calibrated when your room was installed. So this will be the front left, front right, rear right, rear left. So if we wanted to point it right in the middle of the room, we just click there. We would click OK, and now the um, scanner will pan and tilt, so it's pointing a spotlight that is blue right in the middle of the room. So that would then move. And really, that um, is the gist of building a scenario. It's playing the video for a little bit, adding, playing the bit video for a little bit, adding. You can jump back and forth should you wish, both in the video and the play line. So I could jump forward to here. See we've got a different type of video. If I jump way forward, we've got different colors so we can add different effects. Just to show you some um, other little features we've got. so. We have a feature at the top here called Titles. And what this basically is, is it's a, a subtitle you can overlay on your video or your pictures or whatever. And we'll just see how that works. So I've moved the drop line back to here. I'm just gonna drag Titles down. Name doesn't actually matter because it doesn't show up anywhere. It's just a reference for you. This is glue coming space. So this doesn't make any sense but you'll know where and how you want to use this feature and you'll know what you want to write in here. I just want to show you how it works. We can change the font to make it bigger or change the types of letters. We can make it bold and we can change the color so we can maybe make it blue to make it more relevant. We can change the position to top, center or bottom. I'll say center. We have a tick called timeout here, and what that means is this will time out after five seconds, that's the default. You can change this to whatever you want. If you untick this, it means the subtitle would stay for the entire duration of the scenario, and that's not what we want. So we untick that. We'll click OK, and you can just, just about see there, we've got a little pink T, and that uh, just stands for our titles. I hit the play button and just hit pause again and you can just about see in your little preview here that we've got the um, this is calming blue space in the subtitles up and you can put as many or as few of these as you want and you could be asking a question you could be prompting the user to do something in the room to get physically involved and um, 
you could be asking them to press a button, anything. Um, titles are very useful and very quick to uh, put in. And one thing to bear in mind as well is you could make a scenario for a certain user group, um, say three to six year olds, and you would have certain subtitles in them in there for them. And you could have the same scenario for 16 to 19 year olds, and you have a very different set of subtitles in there. And it's just a way for you to maximize um, on your the effort you've made to, to, to make the scenarios. One last little tip uh, that I want to show you in regards to the listeners is if we've put a certain amount of um, commands in here, just like any other Windows program, we can click and drag and highlight this, and then we can go to copy. We move our drop line, right click and paste. You can see we can copy and paste the exact same thing over and over and over and over and over, and over again. And that can make it very easy to, to build the scenario up. One thing to note is on the top line here we have this called video slash audio and what that means is it's one or the other. You cannot have video and a separate audio track. You must have a video track with audio attached or it's just a plain audio by itself. If you're doing plain audio, you can delete that out. Go back to the start. Say we wanted audio instead. Just drag down. We just find our music. And it's just dragged in in the exact same way. And you can choose to just have music without any images. Or you could have subtitles. Or you could drag picture down. Let's say. Have your pictures in and you can have multiple pictures along the way right click stop there you can see let's show the first picture and as it plays along it gets to the second one the second picture will supersede the first So you can have a nice picture sequence, nice and calming, and um, it just works the same way as building a video up. Okay, so I think that covers it all for our first uh, introduction. The last thing we just want to do is obviously save this. We've got a couple of different options. We can save it as we go, and that's a, a good thing to do. It's, a, it's good practice in any computer program to save as you go. If we wanted to save as, so we've made changes to this but we want to keep the original, we can click save as and give it a different name. Or we can simply click save and close. And it brings us back out to the edit scenario group. Okay, in our next video we'll look at adding switch control. Okay, thanks now, goodbye.